It's an amazing piece of technology, the air conditioner. It was invented almost by accident at the turn of the 20th century by a 25-year-old experimental engineer called Willis Carrier. Two consecutive New York summers of extreme heat and humidity had caused swelling pages and blurry prints that were threatening the reputation of a high-quality printing business in Brooklyn called Sackett Wilhelm's Lithographic and Publishing Company. Carrier was dispatched by his employer to see if he could solve the problem, and what he came up with was a contraption that used an industrial fan to blow air over metal coils filled with cold water, forcing the excess moisture in the air to condense onto the surface of the cold coils. That very effectively solved the printing problem, but it also made the ambient air cooler as well, which meant all the print workers felt more comfortable too. Carrier was a sharp cookie and he could see that he was onto something, so he continued tinkering with the technology and by 1922 he created a device called the Centrifugal Refrigeration Compressor, a technology that would completely disrupt the existing North American ice cooling industry. Following the Second World War, Carrier's invention became so popular in the United States that today a typical US household is more likely to have an air conditioning unit than a dishwasher. In fact, air conditioners have come to play a vital role in protecting people's health and well-being in hot countries all over the planet, which is a very good thing. What's not so good is their impact on the climate. AC units now account for about 20% of all electricity used in buildings around the world. According to the International Energy Agency, or IEA, only 8% of people living in the hotter mid-latitude regions actually own an AC unit. But as atmospheric temperatures continue to rise and those developing nations continue to raise the standard of living for their populations, the number of units in use around the world is expected to triple by 2050. And that means it's become a top priority to find technologies that can radically improve the efficiency of these machines in order to minimise energy use and CO2 emissions. Now a European company called Magtor say they've found a way to achieve just that by fundamentally rethinking one of the most energy hungry components of the air conditioning system. So could we have another genuine market disruptor on our hands? Hello and welcome to Just Have a Think. The principles of an air conditioner haven't really changed all that much since Willis Carrier first started marketing the technology nearly a hundred years ago. In very basic terms, a refrigerant fluid flows through a continuous circuit of copper pipe that includes an interior coil called an evaporator and an exterior coil called a condenser with a compressor and an expansion valve sitting between them. Inside the room, the warm ambient air is passed over the copper pipes in the evaporator. At this stage, the refrigerant gas in those pipes is at a much lower temperature than the surrounding air. That means that heat energy from the air can pass into the refrigerant gas, which then continues on to the compressor outside. As the name suggests, the compressor compresses the gas, and that makes it very hot indeed, far hotter than the surrounding air. And that very hot gas then goes into the condenser, which is basically a fan-assisted heat exchanger that allows the heat in the gas to escape out to fresh air. As the gas loses its heat energy, it condenses and changes state into a liquid, just like the moisture in the air condensing into water on the surface of the cold pipes in Willis Carrier's original device. The liquid refrigerant then flows through the expansion valve, which is specifically designed to restrict its flow. The effect of that restriction is to reduce the pressure and turn the liquid back into a very cold gas, ready to be sent back into the eternal evaporator once more. Exactly the same principles are in use in refrigerators, and by simply switching the hot and cold sides of the system, you can also create a heat pump. So the main driving force for the whole process is really the compressor, which is the component that requires the most electrical energy. And that's where Magtor's technology comes in. Most modern compressors and pumps use rotary motors to shove a fluid from A to B inside a chamber, but rotary motors can lose as much as 30% of their output when they're asked to convert their rotary motion into linear motion required by compressors and pumps. That conversion is done by a crankshaft, and once a crankshaft is in the system, you get some friction losses, but more importantly, you get diminished efficiency because you're only getting maximum shove force in the middle of the piston stroke. The start and end of the stroke are both dead points where zero force is available to do any useful work. In a compression task, 
you really want the maximum force to be applied at the end of the stroke, not the minimum force. Overcoming these inertia forces every time the motor starts up requires a big spike in power demand, which can be as much as five times the motor's normal operating consumption. The technology that Magtor have been quietly developing for over a decade now is a magnetically driven linear motor that completely eliminates the need for a crankshaft and achieves far higher operating efficiency as a result. Here's how it works. A fixed electromagnet stator sits at the center of the motor. On either side of that are magnetic plates that are connected to each other via a shaft that runs through the middle of the stator. That connection effectively turns the two magnetic plates into a single moving part. As a voltage is applied across the electromagnet, its polarity attracts the magnetic plate at one end and repels the magnetic plate at the other end. But because it's an electromagnet, its polarity is changing 50 or 60 times a second as a result of the alternating current flowing through the copper windings. That means that once every 50th or 60th of a second, the magnetic plate that was being repelled is now being attracted and vice versa. If you then attach a piston to both of the magnetic plates and combine that with a pump or compression chamber, you effectively get compressive or pumping movement in both directions instead of the single direction that rotary motors achieve. Those two movements can be used either to do two different bits of work or combine through a common outlet to deliver a single higher flow output for an application such as an air compressor. So that's a good start. But you also avoid that costly power spike at startup as well because there's negligible mechanical inertia to overcome. As soon as an electrical current is applied, the movement caused by magnetic attraction and repulsion can get going instantaneously. And on top of all that, Magtor have developed a very smart additional element that optimizes the motive power provided by the magnetic flux of the system. Normally the flux is created at each pole of a magnet loop out through open air and a lot of the force is lost completely. By placing another set of magnetic guides at the top and bottom of the electromagnetic stator and the magnets at either side of it, Magtor are able to channel those magnetic fluxes back into the system. The result is that for the same electrical excitation field, the magnetization levels of the stator and the interaction surfaces are significantly increased. And in layman's terms, that means an extra boost to the system's overall efficiency. In this working example, a mag presser is connected to a five liter tank of air. Magtor's tests have shown that their device, which is smaller and lighter than a traditional reciprocating piston air compressor, can pressurize a cylinder 38% faster while consuming 33% less electricity. And as a bit of extra icing on the metaphorical cake, the magnetic linear motor doesn't need any of the lubrication that rotary motors require, which means significantly less downtime and maintenance costs. Magtors say their magta presser and magta pump models are designed to be easy drop-in replacements for existing units, not just in your home or office air conditioning unit, but in your car's climate control system and thousands of other everyday devices, including pressure washers, compressed air tools, domestic and commercial refrigeration, and all sorts of pumping applications. The company already has more than 50 patents in place in 41 countries, covering about 85% of the world's GDP. You won't find a magta presser or magta pump on the shelf of your local hardware store though. Magtor won't be marketing their technology to individual consumers at all. Instead, their devices will join the phalanx of transformative technologies performing crucial energy saving functions as key components within larger machines and apparatus. You may one day have a mag depressor inside your air conditioning system or in the back of your fridge. You probably won't even know it's there, but your energy bills and carbon footprint will be benefiting nonetheless. A well accepted gauge of any new technology's development progress is the nine step technology readiness level or TRL ladder developed by NASA in the 1970s. As of August 2021, Magtor are at level six on the ladder and they've now reached the stage of development where they're ready to work with mass production partners to get their Magta presses and Magta pumps deployed worldwide. Most folks nowadays are starting to understand the enormity and urgency of the decarbonization challenge facing our civilization in the coming decades. Not every solution will be a headline grabber like say General Electric's Halliadex wind turbine or Tesla's battery installation at Hornsdale in Australia. But technologies like Magtors are precisely the kind of market disruptors 
that our world will need if we're to stand any chance of keeping atmospheric warming to levels that humans and other species can live with. No doubt you'll have a view on this technology, or perhaps you work in related industries and you can share your experience and knowledge of existing systems. If so, then why not jump down to the comment section below and leave your thoughts there. That's it for this week though. A big thank you, as always, to the folks at Patreon who keep these videos completely independent and ad-free. You can join the team at Patreon and get the opportunity to exchange ideas and information with like-minded folks, plus watch exclusive monthly news updates from me, and have your say on future programs in monthly content polls by visiting www.patreon.com forward slash just have a think. And you can hugely support the channel absolutely for free by subscribing and hitting that like button and notification bell. Dead easy to do all that. You just need to click down there or on that icon there. As always, thanks very much for watching. Have a great week and remember to just have a think. See you next week.